Have you been too feeding your baby for months and feeling hopeless and helpless? Today I'm gonna show you how I help Shriyan, an eight month old anti-tube fed baby, been off the tube, recover from bottle aversion and become tube free within four weeks. First, I'm going to show you how Shriyan behaved with the bottle before we got started. So let's see how he had been. <coughs> As always, we started with our consultation call. First, I asked questions about their situation so I could understand them better. For example, I learned about the tube feeding schedule. What is the tube schedule? Like when, when do you feed him with the tube and how much? Okay, so we have been asked to give, there is a calculation that the dietitian did where they, she asked us to give like 150 per weight per feed, something like that. So, uh, which came to about uh, 180 to 200 mils every feed. Okay. And how often do you uh, feed? Five times in a day. Then we talked about what to expect during the program. The two fed babies, they they don't feel hunger because they're being fed. Uh, like you feeding him every four hours. Um I don't know if he's being overfed, so that's a common thing with two fed babies since yes. he's not yes. regulating himself. Uh, yeah. Most babies, two fed babies are overfed. Um, so he he doesn't feel hunger, so he doesn't need to, and he's used to being fed, like he goes to sleep or doing something and then his belly gets full. So he's losing his ability to connect uh, eating orally and his tummy and that he has to do something. So that's great that he still takes some orally. So even if it's a little, he still has that connection. So that's great. Um, Every we, point that you mentioned now. That's exactly our concern. So that all, he's losing his... Yeah. Uh, All these points are our concerns. That he's losing his sense of happen. hunger. He anyways stopped showing hunger cues because of the aversion. And yeah. now with this few feed, he has completely lost this sense of, you know, how that interest that, you know, I'm hungry, I need to yes. be fed. Yeah. Because now with the tube, I mean, we can't even ignore not feeding him. That So we are in such mess. Mess is the word. Actually, it's such yeah. a mess. We want to come out of this tube feeding. It's really uh, affected us a lot. It more than helping, it has just created problems. Yeah, it had uh, momentarily with the volume, right? And yeah. The gain, but now it created yeah. a bigger mess. I mean, it was a concern a lot for me that, you know, his weight is not increasing. He just keeps crying when he's feeding. His weight is not increasing. I just kept repeating the same thing and now I have reached to a point that I'm not concerned about the weight now I just want his tube to be gone and him to feed at least something so that he doesn't yeah. require okay uh, that's good you're not concerned about the weight because he will eat very little in the beginning so um, he will have to learn everything at once but um, since he still takes a little and even solids, 
Um, I'm hoping it won't take long. Um, when the baby doesn't eat anything, then we go slow. But I think I want to try to go like uh, like uh, other babies without a tube. We just use the tube as backup because he still has the ability to, to drink. So yeah. uh, hunger, he will feel the hunger and then likely that will help him to, to start taking the bottle. Um, of course, we're going to do things before, but um, the first few days will be hard. So he's not going to take much. Mm -hmm. um and he he will likely lose a little weight not drastic uh weight loss but there will be some weight loss and mm -hmm. uh, so babies when they recover from aversion they drink a certain amount it's not what they need so they don't start drinking right away the amount that they need so maybe he will start with 60 ml each feed but then he will take one to four weeks to to increase his uh total intake and the uh, and the uh, the intake per feed and it's not linear so it would be maybe one or two bottles higher uh, during the day or a day and then after that more bottles higher so slowly he will increase the his milk intake to the point that he needs so we don't know how much he needs and you're used to feeding him uh, almost a, a thousand ml a day yes. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, I'm almost sure that's overfeeding. So he won't drink a thousand a month by himself. Uh, he he may drink six hundred or seven hundred. But if you see him gaining weight, and that doesn't mean he will jump uh, on the weight chart, but he, maybe he stays on the ninth percentile, and mm -hmm. uh, you you weigh him. Uh, you can check his weight once he recovers from a, a version and he starts drinking from the bottle. Uh, once he gets up to a decent amount, I'll say, not just uh, 50, 60 ml each feed, then you can weigh him. And then in three, four weeks, you weigh him again. I don't know if you can take him to your doctor for weight check. And then yeah. if he's gaining weight, however slowly, and drinking happily from the bottle, then he's drinking yeah, that's, it. that's more than enough for us here. Yeah. yeah, so he may be a smaller baby, so uh, he doesn't need that much milk for his body. So I don't yes. know uh, his size. Um, I, I, See, three, we both three. are not giants, so we are, you we know, are also I am like 5'6", and she is we like 5'5". Five, five, five. Five. We are okay. not you know, great bodybuilders, are not, not. So yeah, just, so Indian so likely he's a smaller body. baby. He needs yes. less than average. So, and that's uh, <laughs> most babies who develop a version. They are smaller babies because they don't have the recommended amount. And doctors and also parents pressure to feed more because they should according to the chart, but they don't need that much. So that's the problem in the first place. So once he is happy to drink then he will increase his volume to, to the amount that he needs and and he eats happily, he's slow, gaining weight, however slowly, then he's having enough so you can relax that, okay, he has enough and that may be 600 or 700 or 800 ms. Uh, we don't know, the only, only person who knows is him. To solve bottle aversion, we need to link good feelings to the feeding position, to the bottle and to the feeding process. We came up with a new feeding position for Shriyan. Do you have a, a bouncer or some place yeah. he likes to be and he, he was never fed there? So bouncy is the one that we use for feeds. Feeds. No, feeds. never never bottle fed. Never only. bottle fed. Yeah. Okay, uh, is he calm there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, so he maybe can... actually that would be good because he he may have some associations with that his tummy is getting filled while he's in the bouncy. Yeah. So maybe that that would transfer to the bottle. So instead of his tummy being filled, he has to do something for uh it to be filled. So um let's use that if he has good feeling so he's calm there he was fed there he has been fed there before that's actually good because he has some associations with feeds and that's just positive yeah, yeah so he keeps 
kicking his legs and the bounce. Oh, leg. I see. That's no good then. <laughs> we want him yes. not to bounce. Um, can yes. you stop yes. it from bouncing or no? We can, we can. Okay. If you ask, if you put it to the soul. Uh -huh, yeah. We can, we can do that. We can we stop. Can try, yeah. We can then we can find another one if it's like you have to continuously hold yeah, a rocker, okay. a rocker right? electric rocker, electric rocker which is okay similar. that you can stop from um from moving. Yeah, we yes. can stop. Yes, yeah. that doesn't move if okay. So yeah. let's try that, or you can try um putting him on your legs. So you would sit down, bend your knees, and let's say these are my knees, and then he would um. <laughs> You will put uh, him on your, your legs yeah. facing you and legs on your chest. Have you tried yeah. this position before or no? No. Okay, maybe try this because it's more connection. So he can feel you with his uh, feet and just more connected to you. He can see you. Um, let's start with that instead of the, the rocker. And if it doesn't work, if it's uncomfortable for him or for you, then uh, then use the rocker. We also discussed how long it will likely take for him to recover from bottle aversion. So okay. fixing the feeding position is quick. The other one is the bottle, which again is a quick fix. Uh, I will explain that at the end. So it will be fresh in your mind um, to what to do. I call this a joyful reconnecting process. I developed this process to link positive feelings to the bottle itself. And you have to do this once if it worked. Um, and then you would need to repeat in the future. If something happens, he linked, uh, he regressed, then you would repeat. But otherwise, it's something that you do only once. I'll talk, I'll explain it at the end. Uh, but that's a quick fix too. And uh, the third one is the feeding position. And that takes a few days. For him, it may take longer. It may be as fast as uh, other babies without the tube. Um, it's hard to predict, but that typically babies without the tube recover three, within three to five days. So that's how long it takes for the feeding process to kick in. And then that will create the change all together. So it's the feeding position, the bottle and the feeding process together that creates a change. Um, and that's three to five days. Many times it's less, but that's a that's a that's a safe um, time frame. So difficult so. to even believe that something so messed up can be cured in three to five days. Um, it can if he if he is still taking um things orally. Not, I'm not saying he will because of the tube. So there are other um components, but uh, I'm hoping that he won't take long. Like. Two fat babies take longer, like three weeks or four weeks, but uh, those those babies don't take anything orally, so they need longer time. So I'm hoping that uh, Shriyan will be faster, but I, I can't tell in advance, but let's say two weeks. We talked about what pressure is, what babies experience as pressure, and how to stop pressuring their baby to feed. Feeding process that takes longer and a big part of um, having an enjoyable feeding experience is to not experience pressure. So first I wanna talk about what babies experience as pressure. It's not just uh, forcing. There are subtle ways of pressuring that babies actually get annoyed and frustrated with it. So these are the things that I noticed over the years that they consider as pressure. So one is the obvious one is forcing. So he doesn't open his mouth or there's a slight opening and then you just try to shove the, the nipple through because you can, you are stronger. Um, that that's what I call forcing. Mm -hmm. Another form of pressure is distraction. So what you've been doing, trying to distract him with TV or playing or walking around, whatever you do to remove his attention from feet so he doesn't realize he's being fed, that's distraction. Uh, I consider Giving like toys in his hands so that you know his hands are yes, occupied. With yeah. the yes. Now. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, a form of pressure because you remove his uh, choice. He can't say no because he's too busy with the toys in his hand. He can't push it away. And then you may manage to put the nipple in maybe a little uh, force there too. 
So um, it could be also. I don't know if you try if he if he takes the pass pacifier. Does he? No. Okay. Because the, you can swap the swap the pacifier for the bottle. It's tricking. Um, so none of these. There are more ways you could be pressuring your baby, but I'm not getting into those here. If you're interested, you can look around on my YouTube channel or on my Instagram page and you will find videos about all types of pressuring. Next, I explained my feeding process. So I'm going to go through the, the feeding process. So you would put him in the feeding position on your um, on your legs, let's say it works, then uh, show him the bottle, just give him a few seconds to settle down, you don't need to do much, show him the bottle, and then you can ask something, you want your bottle, you want some milk, um, and if he's neutral or positive, then get close to his mouth, if you show him the bottle and he's pushing it already, that means he already said no, you don't even have to get close to his mouth. Okay. Or actually don't get close to his mouth. So if you show him the bottle and he pushes um, or turns his head, that's his answer. Then don't try um, to get close to his mouth because he already said no. And um, I have this rule, when in doubt, remove the bottle. So when you are unsure, when you are uncertain, did he say yes or no? Take it as a no. You can't go wrong with that. You can't pressure by taking it away. You will offer again, so he will have this, the other chance to drink if he wants. But if he doesn't want uh, and you think he wants it, then uh, you can pressure him and then that will cause problems that will uh, he can regress or just uh, doesn't progress. So when in doubt, take it as a no and remove the bottle. So let's say you show him the bottle, he's just neutral looking at it or looks other, other ways, that's fine. Then get close to his mouth. Um, if he opens his mouth, then put the nipple in and start to feed. If he keeps his mouth shut or turns his head to the side or does anything else other than opening his mouth, that means he said no, then put the bottle down and give him a minute break. You can keep him in the feeding position if he's happy there. And there, play with him, not with toys, just with your hand or talk to him. Just keep him happy. Just keep him in a good emotional state. Uh, it could be just keeping him calm if he's a bit uh, fussy, but just make sure that he's happy or calm in that break. And if you can keep him in the feeding position, if not, if he wants to get out, it's okay to pick him up for that minute and put him back down when it's time to offer the second time, which you would do the same. He's in the feeding position, show him the bottle, you want some milk, you want your baba, whatever you want to say. And again, if he just looks at it, stay neutral or maybe reaches for it, that will happen uh, after a while. Then get close to his mouth, and uh, if he opens, start to feed. If he keeps his mouth shut or does anything else, then again, that's a no. Put the bottle down, take another minute as a break, keep him happy, and then offer once more, third time. So show him the bottle, you want some milk. If he's neutral or positive, then get close to his mouth and start to feed, uh, otherwise remove the bottle. So this is mm -hmm. what will create the change at the end. So he feels good with the bottle, he feels good in the feeding position, and he has these uh, feeding experiences that are enjoyable for him. He's in control, the bottle went away when he said no, the bottle stayed when he wanted to drink, so he feels in control. This will create trust. And then he has a good experience. He even had fun and in the breaks. He he was uh, with you, connected. He was happy. He had a good experience with the bottle, with the milk. And these will add up and that will create the change. Okay. So now when we were trying to do it without distraction, we just tried to give him this bottle. Sometimes he was taking it. He just chew the nip, the teat. Okay. It, but not suck. Just chew. And then sometimes just he one to like... Yeah, he'll play with okay. it. You and again, take it out. Okay, that shows that he's losing the skill of drinking from the bottle. So he doesn't know what to do with it. So he's fine taking it sometimes, but then he doesn't know what to do with it. 
Since two fat babies and in general babies with bottle aversion don't show hunger cues, we discussed a schedule they could follow. So yep. based on how much he drinks, um, you will follow a schedule because he's not going to show hunger cues. Um, so the first rule is no tube feeds during the day. We will use the tube to catch up at night to avoid dehydration. So the tube will be like dream feeds um, for other babies who have no tube. So during the day, every feed fully awake. Uh, mm -hmm. And no solids no no solid either, no solids either uh, for at least, a, I would say, two weeks. Okay. Um, well, let's see how he does. Maybe uh, if you want the second, second week, you can add the solids back. <laughs> or if we have to take a break, then during that time, you can do solids. But um, the first uh, five days, no solids. Hmm. Okay. So... Um, and then no tube during the day. So, um, and then we'll talk about the night, depending on volume and how to avoid dehydration. So the schedule will be if he has uh, 30 ml or le less, including nothing, then you try again in an hour. So mm -hmm. you attempt the feed and it's the end of the feed. So you, you check your watch, uh, what time is it? And an hour later, you try again. If... Mm -hmm. If he goes to sleep at that time, then you can do 40 minutes just so he's not drowsy and he doesn't have to go to sleep uh, without food. If he decides to eat, then you can do 40 minutes or 45 minutes. So after earlier, or if he shows some type of hunger cue after a while, then you can again offer earlier if he shows hunger cues. We don't want to starve him, but we don't know when he's hungry. And this is a schedule that works for most babies. And then we can adjust as we go based on what he needs. But we start with this. So one ounce or 30 ml, uh, wait one hour. If he has between 30 and... Um, 45 ml, then you wait one and a half hour. Hmm. If he has 45 to 60, then wait two hours. Okay. And if he has more than 60, then wait three hours. You may have been told that you have to stay home for the whole process to help your baby wean off the tube or solve bottle aversion in general. Shafali had this question during our consultation course, so let's hear the question and my answer to it. Okay, so when we do this program, do does the baby and us, we have to be at home always? No. No, but you need to use the, uh, well, outside, it depends. If you are somewhere else, maybe a friend's house or family member's house, you can do the same feeding position if it's your legs. Otherwise, you can uh, put your baby somewhere, uh, either in a car seat or one of you holds him facing outside while the other feeds him. So find a position when you are outside of your, if you are using a stroller that he can sit in. Um, mm -hmm. then you can use the stroller as the feeding position. So it's just that, but follow the same process and try to feed in a place, if possible, that has the least amount of, the least distraction, but you can, you don't have to be home. After our consultation call, the family was ready to start the program. The first step or step zero is to link positive feelings to the bottle itself. So the first day we kept all the tube feeds and they worked on linking positive feelings to the bottle using my joyful reconnecting process. So let's take a look. Shriyam wasn't too engaged with the bottle during the joyful reconnecting process. They repeated twice, but it was a good start. So the next day, 
they had a tube feed at 6 a.m. and after that they followed the schedule and offered the bottle. Let's see how these offers went. Do you want? You want? Do you want? Do you want? Do you want this bottle, Sunu? Okay, okay, no, no. All the attempts were unsuccessful and Shriya's behavior was negative about the bottle. They needed to repeat the joyful reconnecting process a few times so the next day kept offering the bottle on a schedule and also worked on the bottle doing the joyful reconnecting process several times throughout the day. Let's see the joyful reconnecting process attempts. the end of the day there was one joyful reconnecting process that was successful so Shriyam was ready. For the day the goal was to have no tube feeds at all so only oral feeds. Shriyam was not able to drink from the bottle yet so they kept offering the bottle on a schedule and they also tried an open cup with water and some milk. First let's see the bottle feeding attempts. Oh, Rian, it's a nice. You want? Do do? No. Okay, it is gone. You don't want? It's gone. It is gone. Now let's see how he did with the cup. Tura tura kali. He drank both water and milk from the cup. The next day, the parents repeated a small part of the joyful reconnecting process that worked very well that made Shriyan laugh before each bottle offer. This was to continue positive feelings to the bottle. On day three, Shriyan was way more receptive to the bottle. Let's see the attempts, both bottle and cup, and see Shriyan's reactions to both. Shriyan, Shriyan. Want to tap on your lips? No? No. Mm. 
as you could see he was more successful with the cup than the bottle her parents repeated the joyful reconnecting process three times throughout the day while doing that little snippet of the process before each offer. Shuyan accepted the bottle in his mouth a few times throughout the day, which is great progress. So the next day to get him to focus on bottles only, there were only bottle feeding attempts, no cups, and he had three tube feeds at night to fill him up and avoid dehydration. Let's see. Day four. Shriyan didn't drink any milk but took the nipple in his mouth several times throughout the day which is amazing progress. There was some pressuring going on so I gave feedback to parents what to do and what not to do and I believe this is the most valuable thing I do for parents during a consultation program. Watch their feedings and read the baby's body language because it's hard when you are in the middle of a feed, you are anxious, you're scared, you may miss things that I can see in the video. I give you feedback and then next time when you are in the middle of it, you notice like, okay, my baby is doing this, that's a no. Overall, there was great behavioral progress this day. I advise parents to do only two tube feeds instead of three that night. Let's see what happened on day five. Kiki! Kiki! Oh! Kiki! Do you want to see it? Lamb the rooms over us. It's doo doo. And my jap. Shriyan, my jap. Shriyan, my jap. Shriyan, my jap. Shriyan, Shriyan, Shriyan. Shriyan. At the first four attempts, Shriyan had good behavior, but he didn't latch. He took the nipple in his mouth and played with it. But on the fifth attempt, we had the breakthrough we had been waiting for. Let's watch. I admit seeing this made me cry. I was so happy to see Shriyan 
drinking from the bottle. He had 50 ml. He took only five days to take his first bottle. Parents did two feeds with the tube at night. Let's see what happened on day six and seven. The baby drank at most feeds, but low volume. Behavior was great, but volume stayed low. He stayed on the bottle for maximum a minute. We went up with the nipple size to see if it would make any difference. He did well with that size. Uh, we were using size two with the Dr. Brown's bottle and he could deal with the flow but the behavior was the same he didn't stay longer than a minute on the bottle he had around 30 ml at each feed and we were looking for a solution in the next few days we kept one tube feed at night and offering bottle throughout the day while shrian was having this 30 milliliter ish volume at each feed for the next six days, we tried different things to, to help Shreyan stay longer on the bottle, to drink more. And finally, on day 13, we succeeded. Can you tell what's changed? The change we made is to have only one parent present during a feed and Shrian is facing out so there is no distraction. Let's see how his oral intake changed after this. On day 16, we stopped all two feeds. Shrian is over the aversion at this point. Now it's up to the parents when they feel the confidence, when they feel ready to remove the tube. The next week, Shrian kept increasing his volume. You can see his numbers next to me on the screen. On day 26, parents decided to remove the tube permanently. Shrian was tube free. Here's a picture of him right after the moment. Shrian's daily intake went up to around a thousand milliliters per day. So we added one solid meal. Let's see how he was doing with solids. He enjoyed solids too. So we added two meals and sometimes a snack. So he was having two or three meals or two meals and a snack and bottles. Here's a little video about Sri and being happy after breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With solids, he ended up averaging around 800 ml a day with bottles. 
at the end of our work together, we sat down with Shefali, the mom, to chat about their experience. Let's watch the interview. Like, when did you notice things were wrong or something is going on? So I think um, the, the problem started from very beginning, like from the first month. Uh, I had a very overactive letdown and Shuyan had a shallow latching. So it was, I think, very difficult for him to manage that control, uh, uh, control the flow of the milk. Mm. And uh, there was a lot of vomiting that were happening. Uh, but then after two weeks or something, the vomiting stopped. And then again, after a week, it started for four or five days and then it never happened again. So that was kind of uh, some negative experience that he had. Mm -hmm. uh, and what uh, triggered in my mind that something is wrong is when I, it, it was just one month after his birth that I was chatting with my friend and I asked like, you know, does your child uh, vomit? Because she just had a baby six months back or six months before that. And she said, yeah, yeah, she does spit up. And even after three months also, she was still doing it. And then I was like, okay, then it means it's normal because it did happen with my first baby. So I just wanted to know whether it's normal mm -hmm. or not. And she's like, yeah, yeah, it's completely fine. Uh, maybe they just had little more so they just spit up or something as long as it is curdly or something then it's all good so I was like okay and then I asked her the second question that does your baby cry while feeding and she's like no why will the baby cry while feeding why will she cry and then that really stuck in my mind like exactly why would a baby cry while feeding I mean the baby will cry for the feed but they won't cry while feeding. So that's when I understood that something is wrong. Riyan keeps crying during the feed. Mm. He, 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 he cries during the feed or after the feed is over. And you know, that, that was something really stuck in my mind that this is not something normal. There's something problem that is happening. But since uh, overall his weight was gaining fine in the first two months, Everyone around me, they said, like, you know, I'm just overthinking about it. You know, sometimes baby don't need that much and, you know, it's all good. And, but so I, I knew because I was feeding him and I could see that behavior of rejection. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's when it happened. Like it, it started in the initial first month itself. And it could be because of the overactive letdowns, the vomits or my postpartum depression. Thing. Yeah. That I was a bit frustrated that, you know, the, that because we had to take care of the toddler also and then this, and it, it was too much for me. Yeah. So, and the, what did you do after you realized that, oh, something is wrong, he's crying and he shouldn't cry while feeding? What was the next step? What did you do? Did you try to do something about it? So I used to cry with him. That was the first thing that I did, <laughs> that whenever he used to cry. And uh, things were still fine. But when after his two months, when we had to keep doing his weight check, that's when the health professionals came in. And that just was in the whole situation because they kept saying, like, you know, five minutes are not enough uh, for the baby to feed. He has he has to feed longer uh, even if he's very good at sucking even if you have a good let down that's one of the nurse or the doctor had told me like it's not mm. enough for the baby so that so I had to listen to a healthcare professional right so I whenever he used to push after two months he started using his hands so whenever he used to push I used to again try to feed him again try to force him because no five minutes are not enough is what has been wired in my mind it's right. not enough for you. You have to have it. And then he used to not have it. And my whole frustration that I used to, you know, uh, get frustrated and shout. Mm -hmm. And I think that just made the situation more worse and worse. And every health professional that we went to, they kept saying like the baby needs to have this much ML. Mm -hmm. Now I was breastfeeding exclusively. So I didn't know exactly how much he's having. But uh, I, I used to read the articles that, you know, how to know whether the baby had enough is when your breast feel softer. And mine used to not feel softer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was very obvious that he 
not had enough but then i was forcing him also in doing that and you know that really made the situation more worse so did they give you any advice when you said your baby doesn't want to eat more than 5 minutes they said he okay he has to did they give you any advice how yes they kept saying you know uh, uh try to top up with formula uh, 50 ml more with the formula because i was breastfeeding or give it with syringe or spoon feed and i used to be like how do i top up with formula i mean he is not even having breastfeeding enough mm-hmm. how do i even top up with you know more than that uh mm-hmm. and the syringe method that they told us we tried that and that was also very traumatic for us because he used to cry miserably because one person is holding his hands and the other person is just putting the so milk that was the forced too very much forced that yeah. was definitely very forced one so spoon feeding we didn't do much because somewhere now uh, i had started reading articles and i came to know about this aversion and none of the health professionals even mentioned about this word aversion in any of our appointments it was just me who was just reading about things like typing google you know you just get mad when these things happen and you know you just want answers which you are not getting yeah. from any doctors and you just search on google and google sometimes they you know they tend to give lot of yes lot of information that is not required for us at that moment but yeah so that is when i came to know about the aversion and you know i realized that if i forcefully spoon feed him he is likely to develop aversion for solids in the future so i never wanted to do any spoon feeding for the milk so that's what we try to avoid i just did it once and he pushed it away and i was like no what if he pushes it away in the future as well that like, he's already pushing me we mm-hmm. tried bottles he used to not take bottle in his mouth no uh, uh dummy pacifiers nothing mm-hmm. no syringe nothing he just used to not like anything mm-hmm. uh in terms of feeding but he was he didn't have oral aversion i mean he used to put all the toys and everything in his mouth and mm-hmm. we never stopped him because we did not wanted him to develop any oral aversion but he definitely had feeding aversion and the healthcare professionals all, all the solutions that they told one of them said that you know he has a very high palate uh, that's why he doesn't drink more uh, other person uh, she just uh, tried for a minute the bottle and said yeah he's never going to take bottle oh, so really? even we were sure yeah just wow. in one minute how wow. do you even conclude that yeah. you know he will never take bottle i mean we were trying very hard but uh, i think our because we didn't have that much experience of so our first kid he just had bottle not very smoothly but we didn't have to go through all this circus right. in my you know while trying the bottle uh but with this one we used to like rock and then you know try to put the teeth and then he used to cry and the the way of you know um uh, introducing the bottle was also not very right maybe by us uh but uh, the lactation consultants and none of them in the initial stage told me like you know try the bottle maybe that would be good they were just focusing on the breastfeeding mm-hmm. keep doing that keep you know make sure that he is having this much make sure that your baby is having this much milk and did they say how to make sure too much that... of pressure yeah did they say how to make sure he is having that much when he didn't want no no okay and uh, and then eventually did you get him to take the bottle or what happened after so my mom came looking at the situation she came from a home country and within one week so it was very fresh for him there was no pressure she you know very joyfully i think she just did that joyful reconnecting that <laughs> yeah. i don't know how she did it naturally like talking or something and within four days of her arrival he was taking bottle uh-huh something that we tried for two months i think uh-huh. we were in too much of under pressure you know that yes. he has to take bottle we have to find a solution so our mindset our approach our frustration was at different level and my ma- mom was she had no pressure right so she just she was like she actually uh, made the bottle habit for our toddler as well 
So she's mm-hmm. like, I'll do it. So she made it. I mean, he started taking bottle and he was doing really good. But then after a week or something, then he required some distraction mm-hmm. while having the bottle. Then it was like, okay, one person is not enough. Then the other person would do something to distract him. And one person would hold the bottle. Mm-hmm. So the, the situation with the bottle also, what happened is now because I knew how much ML he's taking, again, the health professionals thinks, you know, that he needs to have this much. So, you know, he would be having just 80, 90 ML and I'll be like, no, he has to have 150. Mm-hmm. If for his overall daily intake, he has to have this much for his age. So he should be having this much. So we, we used to keep trying the bottle again and again. Mm-hmm. with the distraction or something and with this the, with the distraction he used to have that much but that became more difficult and difficult as days passed because with distraction also then he started having less uh, and then he wanted more frequent breaks so mm-hmm. eventually he developed aversion with the bottle as well okay and then what what did you try did you try something to to solve it or what was next so we had done almost everything by then. Bottle was the last thing. Uh, we had tried the breastfeeding, um, syringe, a uh, little bit of spoon. Uh, and then the bottle and bottle also we tried so many ways. And, uh, and then again with this aversion thing, we didn't know what to do. And we we went to the hospital. They got him all checked because he started rejecting at just 30, 40 ml. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, then uh, what happened is uh, they said like we'll observe him for one day and I was like okay you can observe him for one day he might have today but he won't he he may not have it tomorrow so mm-hmm. we can't keep coming to the hospital every now and then right so um, that's when they said that okay then we'll get the tube inserted because they had his weight checked and uh, he had not gained even 100 grams in three months wow. okay and how old was he then in the whatever hospital? he weighed whatever he weighed at three months he was weighing the same at six months that's okay. when we were in that hospital yeah six but that's when the tube was inserted because so that he can have uh, the recommended amount and mm-hmm. gain the, whatever he has, you know, he is unable to catch. Yeah. Catch up. So. so you went home with the tube from the hospital, right? Yes. Yes. Did you have a plan how to stop the tube or you just went home with the tube and that's it? So they gave a plan uh, saying that, uh, you know, don't, don't pressure with the bottle. Uh, just keep it at a distance from him. Then mm-hmm. reduce the distance. And if he wants, he let him have. Otherwise, you just focus on solids. They said like solids is the way out. Uh, I mean, okay. milk so bottle. He was almost solids, six months. You started solids uh, then? Yes. Okay. So they said like solids is the way out. So just focus on the solids. Because milk is something most of the babies may not even have after one year. So, you know, if he is having good amount of solids and then little bit of milk, he should be okay. Uh, so that was the plan given to us mm-hmm. and uh, the problem with the plan was because we were tube feeding and we were told by the dietitian like you know he should be fed 200 ml every feed 180 to 200 ml per feed every three hours that he never felt hungry enough for solids mm-hmm. so he did not show any interest in solids uh, and uh, at, and then he was also sick and then he started vomiting and then we had to reduce the feeds we had to divide the feeds every 2-2 two, two hours so he's being fed through tube every 2 hours he's bound to feel no not hungry for solids yeah. so he showed absolutely zero interest in solids and then that's you know it was like we were stuck in a kind of dead end, you know, that solid mm-hmm. is the way out has been told to us. He's not showing any interest in the solids. The tube is not going to go for a year. We mm-hmm. could see that the tube is not going to go for a year minimum because yeah. the amount of solids that he was having, just two spoons, his spoons, not even our tablespoon, his teaspoons, 
just two or three and he used to be he used to just look here and there uh-huh. the problem with the tube feeding was that you know his activity had reduced a lot because with the tube feeding the baby has to be calm and you know at one place so he we used to put him in the bouncy tied mm-hmm. and if he cries then the contents of the stomach will come back into the tube so he mm-hmm. has to be absolutely uh uh what we say calm and uh, happy for that we had to show him the screen because mm-hmm. he used to cry when put onto the bouncy so it it was like we could see that you know we are just going down and down we are showing screen to a 6 month old baby yeah which is definitely not recommended but we had no option because if he is crying he used to not stay at one place he used to cry and if he cries mm-hmm. we cannot do the tube feed and the tube feed used to take like half an hour Mm-hmm. so he would be staying in that bouncy looking at the screen tv mm-hmm. for half an hour and then after the feed also he has to be in that upright position for more 15 minutes so like 40 45 minutes easily he used to just be on the bouncy looking at the screen mm-hmm. and this would happen every 2 to 2 and a half hours in a day mm-hmm. so imagine the screen time that the baby was yeah. getting at that time mm-hmm. yeah so basically uh, that was he, I, that, I, I, that's I the only thing he was doing it. almost right just being in and front just of just sitting on the bouncy yeah. no efforts no activity he had become yeah. so lethargic he mm-hmm. had no interest he, and the entire time after that he used to just cry so if he will just be in our arms mm-hmm. or on the bouncy mm-hmm. that's it yeah it was too traumatic it yeah was a very it. bad time for us it's like yeah. the tube just created more problems for us mm-hmm. than solving it mhm and um i was going to ask something i forgot anyway <laughs> so um he was on he was 8 months i believe when we started working uh, together he's yes. 9 months now or a bit more yes. okay he's 9 months so he was on the tube for 2 months so you kept doing these uh feeding in front of the screen for 2 months or yes. was there something else that you tried two and a half months <clears throat> two, yeah, and, a half two months. and a half months okay and um uh, and how did you find me or my page <laughs> so so as i said i was reading a lot of things and this aversion thing this is the term that i only told the health professional do you think he has aversion and they are like yeah yeah maybe <laughs> mm-hmm. maybe he has aversion or something so i searched on instagram like feeding aversion i just searched like a hashtag or something and uh, i think your account was the first or second that appeared in the search and i went through your account uh, mo- most of the videos that you were talking about and whatever you stated in those videos it was the exact feeling that i was going through mm-hmm. uh, how a mother feels uh, what the baby does and i'm like yeah this is the exact behavior that my baby is doing and um, then i went to your website uh i read the reviews uh and uh, to be very brutally honest i felt it very unreal uh very, like, very uh, much reading unreal oh unreal yeah <laughs> yes because we had been struggling with this problem for 8 months almost and the health professionals and you name it and we had been there we even went to osteopath just to see that if there is some structural problem with him yeah. like every every uh, health professional every field is what something we had visited and none of them were able to give us solution to the problem they just gave us something temporary uh, you know try this maybe this this will work nobody gave us a solution for the root cause of it and uh, reading the reviews on your page it was like you know the aversion has been solved in 5 days 6 days 1 week 10 days and i'm like how is this even possible i mean 8 months we are struggling no doctor is able to help us for 8 months and here this website is claiming that you know you can solve it in like days so we were not sure that you know whether it's uh, if these reviews are real or not uh-huh. yeah but uh, uh, i had i had pinged you uh when shriyan had got his tube inserted that was in april i think once 
Mm-hmm. And you, I, I had asked you a few questions, and you answered all of those. So I had asked questions to other pages as well, some ex feeding expert or something, some other pages, and everybody just said like, you know, uh, it's difficult to you know uh, say anything. Just uh, you know, do a consultation with us or this and that. You know, all these things. Go to our page and do all these things. but you just answered the questions so i i got that positive feeling from you that you are not money minded you are not you're genuinely here to help people you just didn't tell like you know if you need any help if you need any uh, advices first take my consultation you never said that you just answered all my question when i was not even in consultation with you i was had just randomly pinged you on instagram so i knew that you had done this for me and so in in may or something i just told my husband that we tried everything we are really struck with this tube thing and i really get very positive feelings from this lady just let's try this one last thing just one last thing and then i, I should not feel that i didn't try everything for the my baby so yeah and that's when rajiv is like you know yeah let's let's um let's book the consultation and the next day when i wanted to do that i saw your uh, story of you know the case yeah, study the case study and we are like okay we'll just apply for the case study if not then we'll just go with the consultation is what yeah. we thought uh-huh. and you chose us uh, you initially said that you know you are not looking you're looking for a non tube feed baby yes and i am like okay please 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 <laughs> select us <laughs> and because it just you know it ma- made me uh, doubtful that you know is you feeding baby that difficult to solve the aversion maybe it's you know it's difficult maybe the expertise just lie in you know uh, feed uh, reducing the aversion for the non to feed babies maybe shri an may never overcome his aversion but you took the case study you took our case and you know, now our baby is aversion free Yes, yeah, so let's talk about that. <laughs> yes. Uh, first uh first if you could tell me how was it working with me? For how was it for you working with me during the process? How was it for you? See, if I have to tell just one word you are like you were like a savior, you were you were like a god to us because you came at the time when nothing was working. Mm-hmm. Working with you was so smooth. uh we work in uh, we stay in sydney you are in us so yeah we you know, have 15 is, hours <laughs> 15 hours time difference um uh, but um we made you made sure that you know you are looking at all the videos that we sent uh the first meeting that we had where you explained the process that was also very reassuring that finally someone is telling that they will work on the root cause and not just give us you know yeah. try this or the solution and see if it works now you mm-hmm. you knew about the case study you you went through the entire details that we had written in the form you had the exact plan of what to be executed and uh what i liked about you is we we used to send you so many videos but you looked at every video minutely with details zooming in and you know sometimes you used to point out things that even we didn't know that we had done in the video so we 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 could know that you know it's not that you know you're just watching one or two videos that we send you're definitely going through everything and based on that you're telling us the next steps your every step was based on exactly the behavior of the baby and it was not just random so that's what something we really liked about you you know yeah. that's why i that's why i i wanted the videos because that's how i know that's how i can um tell or see what you're doing because if you describe me you describe me differently like i hear this all the time that a baby didn't took anything but when i watched the video the baby did, did drink something but you just label would label oh it was nothing but yes it was and the behavior mm-hmm. was good so if i just listen to that then i wouldn't know what exactly is going on so yeah yeah the mothers then 
they always feel that the baby is taking very less. Yeah, you know, I hear this all the time, <laughs> nothing. And then I look at the videos and there was something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. If you could just tell in your own words, how how did you overcome it? Like well, from where you started and then where you end up, ended up. So the first few days were extremely, extremely difficult for the program of the program like because we had to keep the baby hungry and we had a very easy way of feeding the baby that was through the tube yeah uh, so it was very difficult to control you know that it was just going in the calculations were happening in our mind like okay seven hours eight hours ten hours the baby still didn't have anything 12 hours so you know the first few days were a bit difficult but uh, uh, what I liked about the program was that, you know, you made sure that the baby is not too hungry, is not left too hungry. So there were uh, gaps that were given in between to feed him so that, you know, to maintain his hydration level and his weight doesn't drop much uh, compared to what it is right now. Uh, and uh, you also set us set up a very realistic uh, timeline because I see that in your website, uh, the babies overcame the aversion in like a week. But for us, you had from the beginning told like it's a tube fit baby. It will take two to four weeks. So, you know, it wasn't like, you know, oh, yeah, I can do that in five days and then it doesn't happen. So you yeah. told the timeline and it of course happened before that. But yes, that was the timeline that you had mentioned. Um, I think uh, Shriyan overcame uh, the fear after five days. So there were five days of joyful reconnection. It was on day that, five, and he first day took five, the, yeah, <laughs> without crying that he first took the bottle, and yeah. I literally was crying that time, you know, because he he never did that because of the tube feed. It was extremely difficult because he had lost the ability to drink as well. So it wasn't yeah. like any other baby who has aversion that, you know, they have it in dream feeding. Shriya never dream fed in the bottle. So, and then it was to feed for two months. So he had completely lost the ability to, you know, have from bottle as well. I mean, I didn't even know that, you know, whether he, he would remember how to take it from the bottle. But uh, you he didn't remember. He had to learn it again. He had to learn it, yes. And then the way you were step by step, like, you know, now let's try to, you know, change the bottle. Let's try this teeth. Let's try this size. You know, based on his behavior, every step that you asked us to try, it was not very random. It was very calculated steps that you told us. And the game changer, I think, because initially it was like two people, I'm like, you know, making all good faces, funny faces, and then trying to feed him and my husband is holding him. But the game changer happened when you t told us to try the face out position. Yeah, that's just one person. The day, just one person and that, that's when he started taking more milk yeah. than before. Uh, I think it took good uh, 10 days for him to actually start a you know amount that I'm I was very satisfied with I mean he yeah. had started taking the amount but yes for the mothers it's still you know oh, just 60. yeah <laughs> oh just 60 <laughs> <laughs> so the, the the day that he exceeded 100 ml 120 150 it was like you know in the face out position there was no dependency uh on two people to be present there so you know it's it's not like two people always have to be present. So individually also you can start giving the feed that the face out thing was like a game changer in this uh, program for us. Yes. And then eventually as days passed, his intake increased. Uh, he used to grab the bottle. Whenever he used to see the bottle, he used to just grab it and start drinking. And... Uh, I don't know. Sometimes he used to be so hungry. I, I remember I, I was refilling the bottle and even you were shocked with the amount that he was having. 
Yeah. Which like ex yes, exceeded he jumped, even he jumped his... very quickly. Um, he jumped he didn't go slowly, gradually, quickly. slowly increasing. He just jumped. <laughs> he just jumped, and his sometimes his one time field was almost equal to what his whole day in tech was in the initial days. Yes. So that yeah, that's how um, we came to know that you know um, he's slowly overcoming the aversion. I mean, you were confident from before. It just took me a while to, you know, yes. believe that, you know, he's over the aversion because uh, even for me, you know, solids is the future anyway. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know, once he starts the solids, will he still have the same amount or how much difficult it would be. And that's, you know, you plan the things for solids as well. Like, you know, try this much. Uh, one meal a day and then see how the milk intake is and all and then he was doing fine with that as well so that's when it was I could believe that okay he's over the aversion <laughs> yes I remember uh, asking how long do you need to to believe and I'm like one week more <laughs> yeah one week more <laughs> how did you know that okay you can remove the the tube so uh, once you started taking good amount uh, with your consultation, we decided that, you know, we'll stop the tube feeding completely because in the initial days when he was learning how to, you know, increase his volume or something, he was still not to that level. So we were still doing a tube feed once in a day. And when we stopped doing that as well, it was completely on his own ability, whatever he was taking. And when we saw that he consistent for like a week or 10 days, it was 10 days that we hadn't done any tube feeding. So that's, uh, and he had, we started getting all itchy with the tube and he was too frustrated with it. And it started coming off a little bit and we are like, anyway, we are not tube feeding him. We do not want to do that. Hmm. So let's, that I think because of this program only, I think we got the confidence to, by talking to you and all that we can just get rid of the tube we don't need it and then you just removed it and that's it we just removed it yeah and he was yeah. just much much happier after that because he could freely roam here and there he could just crawl here and there without you know uh we being behind him looking at the tube whether you know it's not getting stuck somewhere it yeah. was extremely difficult with the tube. His, you know, his motor skills were affected. I just wish nobody has to go through that. Yeah. Okay. And now he's having three solids a day. Yeah. Okay. Two to three. Yeah. Two to three. Okay. Okay. Thank most you. of the times three. Yeah. Most of the mm -hmm. times three. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I remember saying that he became a foodie because you sent me videos. It's very sweet videos when he was like so excited about eating and then he was looking through a window to see the food. <laughs> he was trying, yes. if he could, he would get through the window. So cute. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, that, that's really amazing to see how much excitement he shows for the food. Um. And uh, even for the bottle, the, the way he grabs the bottle. So, you know, this is something, it was just like, it was like a dream for us that, you know, we, we didn't know that, you know, we would ever be able to see this day mm -hmm. where he's showing excitement to feel. Uh, it was just far-fetched for us. I mean, we yeah. never thought that we could see this day. But mm -hmm. it's just all thanks to you. I There's nobody else to thank other than you and you too it's I want to say it's just you I want to say here because I was worried because of the time difference that we are 15 hours I'm sleeping while you are doing all the work um, but I want to say you were so um, the word is coachable like you followed uh, every step even if I know it was super hard in the beginning but you still followed it you worked together with Rajiv so um, it was it was amazing to work with you too because it, it wasn't like you were not fighting me or or just giving in um, so you followed through and that's why that's why it happened 
quickly because it was quick five days to learn relearn after tube feeding how to drink from a bottle at eight months it's quick and then the whole process was just smooth because you were you you followed the the advice you followed the steps so um, I really enjoyed working with you because it was smooth. The process was hard. It's not easy, uh, but it was smooth because we could work together very well, even though we were not awake at the same time. So thank you yeah. for that. Yeah. It's not I mean, just thanks to me, it's thanks to you because you were the ones who, who did it. Um, so it was a team effort, a teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. It it was just you know um, I I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe we'll but, come. Al Alastair, go ahead. No, no, you please go. Um, I'm gonna ask the questions the the moms asked. Yep. How did the baby become averse to the bottle? What was the mistake? Well, we kind of talked about this, but if you could maybe point out a few things. The mistake was to uh, decide how much the baby should have. Because with the bottle, we can actually measure how much the baby has. While breastfeeding, you don't. So, But with the bottle, the professionals, because he already was uh, averse to this breastfeeding, so we were in middle of lots of appointments. And there, that's where the health professionals had told, like, he needs to have this much ML in a day, in 24 hours. And when you don't see that having, uh, the baby having it, you tend to, you know, keep offering him with distraction, with any other me means. Uh, and that's what we did. We kept re-offering him. Even when he was rejecting, give a break, again try, keep trying for five hours. We used to try every feed for one hour. Every mm -hmm. feed one hour to just make sure that he's having at least that much amount in that feed so that he can complete the overall total amount of that is recommended in 24 hours mm -hmm. and the forceful reoffering again and again even when the baby is rejecting that's is because of which he uh, developed aversion with the bottle yeah what took him so far to be tube fed i i think it's what caused to get on the tube so you talked about um, it you went to the hospital yeah because yeah because uh, he was already uh, uh, having breastfeeding aversion uh, then he was having bottle feeding aversion and syringe anything that leads to feeding uh, is something uh, he was scared of uh, and he had negative feelings for all these methods yeah. And the fact that he had not developed even gained even 100 grams in three months. So with his, the way he was feeling, he, he was going off the chart, the percentile chart that we have. He mm -hmm. was completely off the chart. So to just get him back to, you know, for his overall growth, overall development, that's when the healthcare professional suggested that we get him uh, get a tube inserted and provide the adequate calories and nutrients that his body needs yeah. so that he can gain at least some amount uh, while working on solids. Yeah. Was bottle aversion the cause for the use of NG? Yes, we already yes. answered this yes. one. Yes. Yes. Uh, how do Breast you feeding feel? and bottle feeding, both aversion both. was the cause. Uh, okay. The need of NG. How do you feel, or I guess, how did you feel confident with dips in volume on certain days, tube free uh, as a week? <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Um, even after the aversion is solved, <laughs> you know now, um, because uh, you know the baby is not having anything, then you know that it's if he has developed aversion. Then you get onto the program. He's having. If you won't believe the way the baby learns to have the amount of milk that you have just imagined in your dreams. And if on certain days that because he has started doing so well, and if on certain days, if he has not, you again tend to, you know, be doubtful that, you know, what happened? What went wrong? Has something gone wrong? 
why is he not having as much as he was having the previous day so yeah i still freak out <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah the bottom line is to not pressure the baby even though there are dips uh, during the days but yeah it's not easy uh, but you, you just if if it's difficult for you just surround yourself with the people who will tell that it's fine it's okay that the baby is having this like my husband is that's like that's great advice it's yeah. fine yeah it's fine let him have half of what he was having it's fine as long as you know he he tried to show me the positives uh like just to the the now that's happening that you know he's having less than what he had yesterday and he's Uh, my husband is showing the positive things in it like you know he's having good solid maybe that's why he doesn't need that much milk that he wanted yesterday so you know if you are feeling anxious just talk to people who would actually make you feel good about the process and uh, good about the whole situation because as mothers i think most of us would freak out <laughs> yes yeah i don't know if it ever goes away <laughs> I I I really doubt. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um how long did it take? W- were there bad days where baby wouldn't meet the daily full feed? Um uh, there were bad I wouldn't say bad days because there was progress every day with Shriyan. I think there was just one day where he had uh, taken less than what he was doing. previous days during the program that was in the initial two weeks uh time that there was after he, he had started taking good there was progress and then there was a dip and then after two days it again you know uh there was a rise and then it never uh, dipped again it was always high he just kept progressing and in the beginning he didn't take full feeds i think the question is about the meet the daily full feed i'm not sure what she means by it but she he didn't he definitely didn't take his full uh intake that not for did. the first 5 days yes no but not uh, even the, yeah maybe the first i think the first 10 days probably he was still lower uh because Very he, low, he yeah. started taking the bottle but small amount at a time so we had to uh do i think one two feed or you did two like divided one two into two two feet. yeah i think we were doing two 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 feeds one like late evening one at night and yes. then one early morning so that he meets that hydration uh yes. level and, we and went then to the one. entire day yeah. yeah and the entire day we just try the program of how much yes. he has on his own yeah so i believe it took probably uh two weeks to get to the yes. point that he took his full needs that he actually needs with the bottle yes it took two weeks for him to completely have all the feeds orally without me yeah and anything. good amount too so good volume. good amount yeah 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 and um uh, how long did it take yeah we answered that two two weeks and yes i think we answered all of it how did they know it was the right time to start the wean so i think the the question is that you started working with me on it so start the yeah. program how did you know it was the right yeah. time it was already late <laughs> when we started work it was uh it was too frustration for us uh, because uh you were the last try that we were doing uh the last uh, way out uh because we were told like solids is the way out right and because of the ng fees he wasn't showing much interest in solids mm. so the way out was not working so we knew that we are stuck and we need to find something else to you know we need to try something else to get this work worked so mm. that's when we approached you like we need some robust solution for this avaj and we need something for the to eliminate the root cause these banded solutions are not going to work tube feeding you do it for 6 months after that what mm-hmm. what if this baby has still not you know developed liking for solids what would you do 
Yeah. Even you can and and then when I read about this tube feeds, you know, it's very scary because then then that's G tube and what else? And I it, and I don't know. It's I don't know if it's motherly thing that you know you just go to the extreme. Always. Yeah. I do it. At too. least it happened with me. Yeah. You <laughs> yeah, just I go do. to the extreme. Oh my god. Now if he doesn't have it, now then he'll he'll have to get the G tube and then what will happen to my baby with G tube and everything. So you know, I just did not wanted to go down that path, and we knew that we need something else, and that's mm-hmm. that's when we knew that you know we have to do something. How did you get through the hump of just one or two sucks on the barrel in the beginning? Ah, uh, uh, it was difficult, but I yeah, think it was the difficult. first five days that was. So I'm yeah. curious about yeah. this too. Um. Nothing. We were just like you know, just trust the program. Just trust what uh, Zilvia is saying. Like you know, this is what we, <laughs> me and Raju used to keep saying to each other. Like it's okay. Then once we, uh, we used to be like you know, we used to wait for that eight o'clock at night to do the tube feed because we knew that you know he has hard. He has not had anything, so we used to be like okay. Let, it's eight o'clock now. Let's just do the tube feed so that he uh-huh. has something. It's very difficult because you know you, you you can see that the baby also becomes little bit cranky. Yeah. When he's not having the feed, but and you feel so bad that you know he it's it's not in his control. He's he's fearful of the bottle. I mean, imagine what he must be going through. That he's hungry. But he fears that if he has the water, something wrong is going to happen. Imagine what the baby is going through right now. Yeah. That you know nobody is feeding me. He they are trying one time and then nobody is doing because he was so used to getting the milk in his tummy with no efforts. Yeah. That I think that was more frustrating for him as well, and extremely difficult for us. Extremely difficult for us. So it helped you that you knew that at eight. 8 p.m. You we would get to do it. Yeah. Yes, so that, yes. that was at least certain that he will get something, right? Yes. Yes. And yes. you know, it's it's not even dream feed, right? It's completely in our control that how much we give. But even in that too, we just listened to how much you had told us to feed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were just giving that much amount because we knew that you had told us the exact hydration amount that he needs. So yes. we were just exactly giving that but mm-hmm. we were very happy like you know okay something is there in his stomach so it's yeah. okay <laughs> it's okay now it's just six hours he had something six hours before then as days pass you become less uh worried about the gap uh and you become more confident uh you know seeing the baby progress even though they are not having but you see the progress and you keep you tend to trust the process more and more and you are okay to keep that gap then. Like, okay, you saw something positive in the baby. So it's okay. He will have after six seven, six or eight hours. Okay, he didn't have, maybe tomorrow he will have. There was some progress today. Yeah, and the progress just was kept... behavioral, right? In the beginning, it was behavioral. Like first he, he was crying yeah. with the bottle and then I remember he just, he was calm, like even opened a little bit his mouth but didn't drink, just opened his mouth uh, so we were looking for this tiny behavioral uh, progress and, right, and that yes. we could see, and you could see that right day by day and that gave you the the strength that's what you are saying to to keep going yes yes definitely your everyday advices uh, based on the videos that we were sending uh, i felt confident that okay we are on the right path uh, whatever uh, you are uh, reviewing to the videos is all good and we just need to trust it hmm. okay oh that's it that's all the questions <laughs> and i have one last question uh what would you tell those moms uh, who are where you were before and thinking of working with me i think um i just just one line go for it <laughs> do not think anything do not think uh, whether this will work or not it is definitely going to work as i said my case was a bit difficult everybody thinks that their case is difficult because they have gone through their own 
turbulence and you know uh, all, all the traumatic experience everybody thinks that their baby is at the worst phase and they cannot be cured uh, i felt the same thing because he was a tube fed baby it was extremely difficult especially when all the healthcare professionals also just give up on you and they don't have any solution they just keep saying like you know try this or that and you might think that it is the end of the world and nothing is going to work if you think so just go with this program uh it's it definitely 100% works uh there would be a few uh days where your anxiety is at peak especially the first few days uh it's very hard uh you might maybe doubt as well that you know is it really going to work i don't think so the baby is still not having it's been so many days i don't think the program is working it will work just give it time it it is definitely going to work and uh, zilvia will make sure that you know the your baby's health is not compromised anywhere so you do not have to worry about it and if my baby a tube fed baby can be cured then your baby can too definitely thank you <laughs> yeah i i am going to recommend you to everybody that i know who is going yeah. through this definitely there is no other question i don't have any um uh, doubt about it thank you <laughs> thank you so much safali and um and just message me anytime in the future if you have any questions uh like now that yesterday when you messaged that you freaked out so please feel free to do that in the future too and uh please update yeah. me and this is one more point that when you yes. take this program just make just uh relax because silvia is going to be there to support you 24/7 i mean she won't be there like 24/7 but she yeah. would be there to answer all your questions yes. so you 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 will never feel alone Uh, you won't feel uh, uh, the question of what to do next because she would be there to just help you out with everything, and she never gets angry. You can just ask as many questions, and she's just going to sweetly <laughs> answer it. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome. What we are today is only because of you. This whole. uh aversion and the tube feeding it really affected our family dynamics um uh, especially we couldn't give much time to our toddler as well uh yeah. because we were too occupied with you know taking care of shreyan uh it really affected uh, uh i mean even my and rajiv's relation you know that we were just only talking about the aversion the feeding because it that was the only thing that was going in my mind yeah the baby is not having much that's the only conversation that i was having with my husband from months mm -hmm. there was no other thing that to discuss there was no other thing that what am my toddler is doing you know it just everything they had taken a back seat so uh today we enjoy all the moments so much i started clicking pictures of my baby again uh, we we have such precious moments we are so happy seeing shreyan smiling and laughing and you know uh, being so active in all the things uh we just much happier family it's just because of you thank I'm you so, so much i'm so happy for you you are <laughs> so happy for you i like to see you smiling more <laughs> compared to the we talk first <laughs> i i i had just forgotten what happiness is i have forgotten to smile it yes. they were just crying and crying and crying the entire day and night every night i used to just cry to sleep thinking it, it was just difficult to accept you know something so yeah. normal and so natural that every baby does why is my baby not doing it Mm. I mean, feeding. Who doesn't want to feed a baby? Only thing they do is feed, and that is what yes. my baby is not doing. Yeah. So every day I cried. I have cried every day from, mm -hmm. and I used to feel very bad looking at everybody's photos and you know status that how happy everybody is, especially after having babies, the best year of my life. And here I was going through the worst time of my yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
I just thought that it's never going to end. This is what you might be feeling, all you mothers, uh, that it's never going to end. If you think so, just take this program and it will end. <laughs> and happy days happy days will be there yes yeah thank you so much safali i hope watching this beautiful family's journey towards to free life gives you hope and some tips so you can do the same if you want me to help you and your baby becoming tube free then there is a link in the description and on the screen where you can read the details of my program or you can email me at sylvia at bottleaversion.com Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I have a new video every Wednesday.